As uh, sort of the provincial leader for the program, I went to all of the AIDS conferences. And uh, I remember thinking in 87 and 88 that um, what was needed to put on a successful AIDS conference, uh, we had all those things in Vancouver and more with the hospital care, the prevention programs, the strong community. So I thought that we should try to bring the conference here. So every year at succeeding conferences, the International AIDS Society board would take presentations from places that wanted to host the conference. And I presented for two or three years in a row, uh, had the support of the Vancouver Hotel Association, uh, some tour agencies, the government, the city. Um, but um, for some reason, it didn't really go anywhere for a while. And then uh, eventually I was called by Mark Weinberg, who's a, an AIDS researcher from Montreal, very famous one, who was associated with the International AIDS Society. I think he was the president at the time. And I remember him saying something like, well, Mike, are you really serious about bringing the AIDS conference to Vancouver? And I said, yeah, I'm very serious about it. I think we can do a great job. And he said something like, well, not many people in the International AIDS Society know about you and the province. So uh, if you could bring together some more internationally renowned uh, AIDS researchers and clinicians into a group, then that uh, your bid could be successful. And so I remember gathering together uh, three other people, Mark Martin Schechter, who was uh, sort of the, aid, the leading AIDS epidemiologist of the day, uh, Mike O'Shaughnessy, who was uh, a well-regarded lab uh, director and the director of the BC Center for Excellence of, of the day, and uh, Julio Montaner, who was an AIDS clinician and probably the world's best known AIDS clinician these days. And uh, we formed a group of four, and uh, the conference uh, was accepted by the International AIDS Society. We put on a very successful conference, uh, I think, especially. We uh, had the most participants of the day. I think we had 15,000 registrants. We had a lot of uh, very positive community participation from the groups uh, uh, in Vancouver and Canada. When we put the 1996 conference on, the International Conference for AIDS in Vancouver, we hired Andrew to be our community liaison person. And he did a wonderful job. He was so skilled and committed, it was amazing. And I can tell you, he had a hard job. I mean, the four of us who put the conference on, we were totally committed to make sure that we didn't go bankrupt. Andrew was saying you need to respect the rights of the, you know, the rights and uh, of the people in the, you know, in the HIV community who, from around the world, who are making this meeting possible. And so there was that tension. And Andrew did a great job. We all learned a lot from him. He sure helped us understand what our requirements were to put on a, a, a meeting like the 96 conference and to have the community organizations fully included. After the conference, Andrew became the executive director of AIDS Vancouver. He, and you know, he was a nurse, he worked in the downtown east side. He was so committed to making the lives of people better. Andrew was just a caring, smart as blazes guy. And I'm glad I knew him, and I was really sorry when he passed. We were really involved as a community group in preparing for the 96 conference for about two or three years. Uh, we were on many, many committees and uh, it was a very exciting time. We were all kind of nervous about what it meant to have the world come to Vancouver. One of the controversies of the day was travel restrictions on people with HIV. The federal government was quite supportive around relaxing those travel restrictions a little bit. And then the other issue was health care. We were able to negotiate with the government and St. Paul's Hospital to provide uh, free medical care for all participants. Some people got sick. Uh, our keynote speaker from Africa 
uh, got sick and uh, had to go to St. Paul's Hospital. Fortunately, she got up out of her bed and gave her a dress, which was very well received. The conference was the, the worldwide debut of combination chemotherapy, triple combination drug therapy. When we first heard about the new therapies at the conference, it seemed unimaginable. We, we were kind of skeptical. It just seemed so amazing that people could live longer with this virus. And then after a year, we found that some people were doing better on the medications and it started to become more real. And we realized that it was an amazing moment in history. But there were still those patients who were too ill to benefit from the drugs. And so the dying, as I called it, carried on right through 1997. And it only started to feel better in about 1998. But then, of course, we had this influx. We had a large influx from the outbreak of HIV in the downtown east side. So we had a whole new population with very advanced disease. So. It got better, but only, <laughs> only a bit.